Hey there. If you are looking to integrate AIS and or GPS to a tablet or iPad using Wi-Fi, then this video may help you. The reason I use it is because I prefer using the Navionics app on my iPad over my legacy Raymarine equipment. That's pretty antiquated. I'm using 15 year old stuff. So here's a schematic of what it is to enable this. You take your existing VHF antenna that is going to drive your VHF radio and you split the signal and you send that signal to a box that converts a bunch of information to Wi-Fi. In my case, I chose a Glomex active splitter. It needs power, 12 volts, and it will boost the signal, split it. You send off the, the original to the VHF. You send off another cable specific to uh, AIS signals to the Quark box that I purchased. And the Quark box needs uh, five volt USB power. And there's a little device you can buy on Amazon to provide that. It'll also accept NEMA in and provide NEMA out. So if you have other stuff you wanna integrate along with the AIS, you can. And then I purchased a separate GPS antenna. And then that through Wi-Fi talks to the tablet. So for the parts that you would need to accomplish this, in my case, I purchased the Wi-Fi only iPad. Now I've had that maybe for about a year and I've been running Navionics successfully and happily on that for my boat. You don't need to buy the cellular version of that, which includes the GPS, because you can easily provide that to this boat for cheaper than you would pay for the upgrade in the iPad. This is the, the secret sauce is this box. There's multiple on the market. I chose this one, the price was right. It looked like it had good integration and it was tested with Navionics. This box um, I purchased through Amazon for $132 and uh, it does everything that I think you would need to, to get the data into Navionics on a tablet. Okay, again, my case on the iPad. And this is the power supply that I'm using to drive that Quark electronics box. It's a buck DC-DC to converter. It takes a 12 volt input, converts it to five volts. And then I wanted to mount my iPad in my helm station in a kind of nice way. It's not a, a official RAM mount, but it's the equivalent of a RAM mount for under 50 bucks. And then I bought a wireless antenna for the GPS so that I'd have a good reception. And then here's what it looks like on my helm. And so this is a picture of the, the front of it um, next to my Raymarine where I often run radar. And then the side view <clears throat> will show how I have uh, some USB connectors. Those are Blue C USB outlets. And I'm just using short USB cables um, to Lightning to drive the iPad. On that same console, I've routed the antenna um, out so that it's only going through the layer of fiberglass above my head to get to the uh, satellites, which is proven to be pretty good. It doesn't have an issue. For my um, installation of the Quark box on the lower left and the Glomex active splitter, um, there's multiple cables involved. Uh, the schematic, if you go back to that, you'll see what they are, but you have multiple inputs to the Quark box, including GPS and AIS and power. And then you see that black um, Wi-Fi antenna, and that's what's talking to your tablet. The active splitter is taking VHF signal in and pushing AIS and VHF out, also FM in case you need it. So that middle cable shown in there is, could be plugged into an FM stereo to get really good reception from your VHF aerial. Um, the cable in my hand is the BNC connector. That's what the AIS input is to that Quark box. Here's a picture of my 12 volt terminal strip. Power's on top, 12 volt, black ground on the bottom, and then you can see the 12 volt to five volt converter there. So it's just picking up the 12 volts, converting it to five, and those signals are fed to the quark box as power. Now once you've got that all hooked up and powered on, now comes the fun. In your Wi-Fi settings on your tablet, you just choose the name of the box. In this case, I named it something specific called Quark AIS GPS. And then once you're hooked up to the Wi-Fi signal, you enter your Navionics app or your any navigation app and then select the host and the port number, TCP. It's uh, simple and, and the instructions are in the manual. And then once you're in the actual app, all you have to do is go to map options in Navionics, select the AIS settings and turn them on. And then all of a sudden you'll see boats appear with uh, markers for the direction of their where they're going to be going and 
For example, if you see a line in front of a boat, you'll see, in my case, I set it up for three minutes. Where's it going to be to know if I'm going to have to worry about it? But once you click on a boat, you'll get the name of the vessel, the call sign, speed over ground, course over ground, any relevant data that you would care about if you're driving in the night or in fog. And then another feature that I don't use, but some of you may find interesting, is to set up the potential um, collisions. So you can select uh, collision warnings if something's going to hit you. Anyways, um, good luck. I hope that you found this useful and uh, have fun with it.